Well, good morning and welcome to another Thoughts from the Lady Grove Church. I was on uh, my laptop yesterday. It was actually while I was just putting something up on Facebook telling people that my, I put up yesterday's Thought for Today on YouTube. When I, my, was caught, my attention was caught by a, 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 another post that someone had put up on, I think it was possibly spotted in Didcot or one of those local Facebook pages. Someone was saying that it was the birthday of, I'm not sure if it was a child or a loved one, um, and because of lockdown they couldn't do the birthday celebrations like they'd norm normally do, so what they wanted to do is make it something really special. Where could they get a helium-filled balloon? And I had to think to myself, well, what is it about a helium balloon that somehow fills that gap? How can a helium balloon replace all that a normal celebration would in entail apart from lockdown and it just so happened that while I was having this thought Lindsay was in another room having her weekly zoom meeting with is it Weight Watchers or, or um, one of those other signs she she tends to call it Fat Club um, and she was sharing about this idea that she'd had about cooking rice in cream soda. Apparently it was a recipe she'd spotted somewhere and that was going to be good. And then she got told that, um, that it wasn't as, 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 as sinless as she thought it, had, it would be. And then suddenly somebody else uh, chipped in with a mantra that I regularly hear when Lindsay is, is having these meetings. Um, Use the chocolate sauce or put some chocolate sauce with it. There's apparently this wonderful chocolate sauce that whatever you do, put chocolate sauce in it and it will be wonderful. It will make even the most unpalatable, boring dish suddenly. Um, haute cuisine. Lindsay did try it last night. It was even worse, she, she admits. But what is it about chocolate sauce that can suddenly make something so much better and I thought I was that's where I was going to end my sort of thinking <laughs> when blow me this morning I get an email from the um, County Council reminding me that today is National Thank a Teacher Day apparently I'd never heard of it before I'll be honest apparently uh, having a little look on, on Google it's something that's been going on since 1998 where someone thought it would be a good idea to have a thank a teacher day um, to really highlight the importance of the te te teaching profession and I had to think well do we really need a day for that surely we should always be thankful for our teachers and and I hope that the vast majority of us do appreciate just what an incredible job teachers do. We've all been through their hands and I'm sure all of us will have at least one teacher that we're extremely appreciative for and I would imagine most of us recognise the incredible importance of, of that profession. And I remember, you know, at the end of every single school term, Lindsay, as a teaching assistant, would come home with flowers and chocolates and presents as an expression of gratitude from the parents of different teachers. So why do we need a day? What, what is it about this day that will suddenly make everything even more special? Why or what makes things special for us? What makes things important? Ecclesiastes, the, the writer there who spends a lot of his time thinking about of what's, what's important and probably concluding far more than what is meaningless. And in chapter 2, starting to read at verse 4, he talks about, I undertook great projects 
I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also owned more herds and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amassed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and provinces. I acquired male and female singers and a harem as well, the delights of a man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stayed with me. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labour, and this was the reward for all my toil. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done, and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. And near the end of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verses 7 to 8, light is sweet, and it pleases the eyes to see the sun. However many years anyone may live, let them enjoy them all. This feeling that you know, we, we try and make things special by, by gaining things, by putting things in place, and yet the guy who writes wrote Ecclesiastes goes, well, yeah, I managed to get everything that I thought would make life special, and actually no. In Mark's Gospel, he talks about a time when Jesus was sat in the temple and watching people giving their offerings. And he spots lots of people sort of just putting their hands in their pockets and dropping quite a bit. And then he sees a widow who just drops in a couple of coins. And he commends her because, as he says, everybody else has just drawn from their leftovers, their spare wealth, while she was putting in there all that she could. And, I, and we often use that to, to talk about the fact that giving isn't so much what we give, but it's a sort of the heart behind it. But I guess it's also about the heart of the receiver. I couldn't sort of go into a shop and you know, go up to the counter and sort of say, here's all I've got for this whatever when it's not enough the person behind the counter would tell me where to go he needs the full payment so there needs to be that mixture of heart I guess what I'm saying is we're all different a couple of songs came into mind while I was thinking through this you know you've got Mary Poppins recommending that a spoonful of sugar works for things. Jiminy Cricket singing about all you have to do is give things a whistle when things become hunky-dory. The reality, I guess, is, as I say, that each one of us needs different things to make life special. And they can be simple things. For some people who maybe have different values to me, they need huge, great, super-duper cars and what have you. Never been particularly my, my thing. It's also got me thinking about you know some of the other blogs that I look at. You know, as, as somebody who likes painting figures and doing a bit of wargaming, you know, I follow quite a, 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 well at least a forum, several blogs about it. And, and it's not unusual for people to put up some of their latest things that they've made, um, some of the scenery they've made or some of the um, models that they've painted. And some of them I look at and I think I, they are, they're really works of art. And when I think that these, these figures are sort of, well, some of them are as small as a six millimetre in height, I, I'm just blown away about how incredible the painting is. Um, while others I look at and I go, how have you got the guts to stick that up almost? It's, it's, it's awful, it's, it's not even as good as I could do. And I don't stick hardly anything up because my, my, my ability is not that good. And yet those people who even stick up the, 
the pretty amateurish, less than average stuff, still get compliments from others. Well done, that's brilliant. And people find something to compliment them about. So I guess what I'm saying today, and maybe this, this thought has got you going in other directions, is the need to recognise that we are all very different in what we appreciate and what we don't appreciate, what we encourage and what we discourage. The important thing, I suppose, is to find those little things that make life special for us. And not to go all out to get them, but perhaps recognise the special things that are in our lives already and be thankful for them, whatever they might be. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the simple things. The giggle of a baby. The smell of a beautiful flower. The drawing that the little child has come home with. So many things that are, are simple and yet bring us pleasure. And thank you, God, that you are a God who delights in the simple things. That you have a heart that appreciates however little our offering might be. You rejoice in it. You're thankful for it. And so may we never be discouraged from sharing what we have with you. And Lord, help us to appreciate this life, the very simple things. Even in this lockdown, Lord, may we see those things that come into our lives or are part of our lives. We're thankful for so many simple things. Our senses that enable us to enjoy this world and communicate. We thank you, thankful for those little acts of kindness. And Lord on this thank a teacher day. Yeah, we are. We are eternally grateful. And especially at this time when they are putting on in so much work and putting their lives at risk to take care of children. And Lord, we do pray for particularly the senior management teams of each school as they try to work out how best to start this opening up again. We pray that all parents will appreciate the challenges that are faced and will give them the, um, the leeway they need to make the decisions and that they will feel appreciated by all. And Lord, we thank you again once more for the, for the medical staff and the care staff. And we pray that they would feel appreciated by those in power. That gratitude would not just be expressed in words and claps, but rather in provision of the necessary resources for them to do their job effectively and safely. We pray for our continued plans to get tracking and tracing in place. 
help us to, to recognise the challenges faced there of getting something like this up and running for the first time. And Lord, as we appreciate your world, we pray that you would grant us wisdom and sense so that we can enjoy it in a way that doesn't risk an increase in the number of new cases. And Father, as we've thought about how different each one of us is, may we walk this life accepting the differences of others, even when those differences might make us feel uncomfortable, might, might even make us um, disagree with each other. And we still have open hearts and minds and a willingness to recognise that each one of us is loved equally by you and created by you and has your image within us. And Lord, we continue to pray for those who are troubled at this time, for whatever reason that might be. If it's fear or worries for themselves, for loved ones and neighbours around them, whether it be for much greater things, much uh, larger things, I say. We pray that you would bring them peace and fresh insight into their, their situations. And Lord, we pray for ourselves. We thank you that you have made us unique. Help us to love ourselves as you love us. Even those bits that perhaps society has told us or we've dreamt up for ourselves aren't, aren't particularly attractive. We would appreciate ourselves for who we are, while recognising that your spirit is working in us, changing us, transforming us to be more, more Christ-like. And so we commit today to you. We pray that you would you would guide us, that you would nudge us would help us to see the many things that we have to appreciate and be grateful for. And Lord, help us to be ever open to your call to serve others, to bring them comfort. close with the Lord's Prayer as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So have a good day. Look for those little things that make life special for you. Maybe just spend some time considering them, being thankful for them. Whether it be a helium balloon, chocolate sauce, or whatever it is. In the meantime, I'll see you again tomorrow. God bless. You.